Uber's done it again. Uber's made another significant change in uh, how they interact with the driver. We're seeing AB5, the new law in California, is definitely forcing some changes. In this video, I'm going to share with you what the change is, what markets are impacted first, and at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you whether I think this is really good for the drivers or is this really good for Uber. Hey everybody, it is Jay Crater with The Rideshare Guy, and today we're going to talk about yet another change uh, that we've seen. But first, let's start with where we at right now. Okay, the background of this is that AB5 is a law that went into effect in California on January 1st. And uh, Uber and Postmates have sued the state of California saying that it's unconstitutional. They're all just ignoring it. And uh, we've seen now in the past month, Uber has made some changes. Um, drivers are now able to see the destination and how much they're gonna get paid right at the ping. Uh, drivers are getting paid a straight 75% uh, percentage of the passenger's fee, right? That happened, gone is penny surge. Now multiplier surge is back and the quest bonus has also changed. So that's the background. Let's look at what's new. Number two, what's new? Well, Uber is letting you sort of set your own price uh, at the airport. And what you're seeing here is the list of markets, all right? So this affects markets Palm Springs, Sacramento, and Santa Barbara. So what does that mean, set your own prices? Let's get into how it works. Three, how does it work? So again, this is for drivers in those three markets. We do expect it to expand to other airports over time and eventually out to other uh, states, right? Um, but here's how it works. There's basically two components to it. First one is you can set your own sort of multiplier. So let's say you're near the airport and you wanna pick somebody up, but you wanna pick them up at a 2X multiplier, sort of like a 2X surge multiplier. You can set it for 2X. And then if you get a ping, that person is going to pay 2X, right? Or the other feature is that um, when there is a surge a multiplier in effect in an area, you can opt out of that. So let's say there's a surge of 1.5 and you, you wanna make sure you get a ride, you can set your surge uh, off turn your surge off so you just have a normal fare and then you're more likely to get a ride because the lower the fare, uh, they're gonna get pinged first, okay? Let's look at a graphic. So what you're seeing here is what the, uh, your screen will look like and you can set your driver preferences. So you can see you can set your fare multiplier, right, to, uh, well, right there it's at one, but you can set it to two, to three, to four, and then you hit save and you're good. So now the other component is that you can opt out of surge. And again, let's look at this screenshot. And what you see here is that uh, in this scenario, the surge in the area is 1.2, but you can tap to change your fare settings and set it to uh, no, no surge, okay? so. Those are basically the two components, the two uh, bits of control that you now have over your pricing. So the real downside is that, <laughs> let's say I'm a driver, all right? And I, and I got a beautiful car, my black Honda Accord hybrid, I keep it clean, I'm an excellent driver, and I set my multiplier to three. Well, none of that is taken into account, right? All that matters is that the lowest fare is going to get the first ping, right? So what good is it if you set your multiplier higher to set your price higher because you think you, do, you can deliver a quality product, then you're gonna get less rides. You may not even get any rides, right? Because everyone's going to go towards the bottom and turn off the surge in order to get a ride. So I think this is a pretty huge downside and that it really works against people who want to charge higher, a higher price because you can't justify the higher price with higher quality. So Uber's doing this so that they can say uh, in court that they're giving drivers more control, right? So an independent contractor, say I'm a plumber, right? And I can set my own price. Well, I can share with my customers, you know, the quality that I deliver. I can share testimonials from other uh, 
clients of mine, and then I can say, you know, you can go with uh, company XYZ, or you can go with me. Now, I charge twice as much, but I can work in half the amount of time, and I can deliver you a better product. None of that is going on here. All that's, all that's happening is we can say, I want to get a 2x uh, multiplier at the airport, but everybody who's got 1x is going to get a trip first. So then I'm just waiting longer, hoping I can get a ride, hoping that, <laughs> that there are other people that are trying to get three or four times surge uh, because I'll be ahead of them. But the majority of drivers, I think, are going to just keep things low so that they can stay busy and keep, keep working. So that's the real downside. So number five is what's next. What's next is it's going into these three uh, markets. Uh, it's gonna kind of get tested and then it'll slowly expand out uh, probably to California first and then to the rest uh, of the country. Key takeaways. I don't like this. Uh, this is just gonna make my job even more confusing because now I've got to figure out this whole multiplier that I want to offer and surge. I mean, the way the surge worked was pretty smart, right? If there was higher demand, the surge went up and everybody got kind of benefited from that. Now there are going to be people who are going to see that there's surge and they're going to think, aha, I'm going to charge less. I'm going to go under the surge and get, get rides easier. So it's just for me as a driver, it just gives me more to think about. It's not really giving me any control over my pricing uh, in that I can't really charge double because I think I offer a better product. So I don't like this. That's my key takeaway. Um, but I'm curious to hear what you think. Do you think this is really a win for Uber or a win for the drivers? I say this is a win for Uber because it gives the perception of giving some control back to the drivers. Um, but it's, it, it's, it's not going to work out well, I think uh, it's not going to really benefit anybody uh, that much. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, here's your chance. Subscribe. Stay on top of everything that's happening in the rideshare industry. This is Jay Crater uh, with the Rideshare Guy coming to you live from Bangkok, Thailand, saying go out there, make it a great day, and be safe out there.